Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Monday, April 15th, West Fargo City Commission meeting. Before we start, could I please ask you to silence your cell phones with the exception of our emergency personnel? And at that, please join me in a Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Madam Secretary, would you please call a roll? Here. 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 Let the record show all commissioners are present. Item D is to approve the order of the agenda. Commissioners, it has been presented to you. It has been in your packet. Move to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Olson. Is there a second, please? Second. Commissioner George, second. It's been moved and seconded to approve. The order of the agenda as presented for April 15th, 2024. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Carried. Item E is the approval of the minutes, April 1st, 2024. Again, they are in your packet and they have been distributed. Move to approve. Thank you, Commissioner George. Is there a second, please? Second. Second by Commissioner Anderson. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes of April 1st, 2024. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Next order of business is building permits. The building permits have been distributed and have been in your packets. Any questions? We'll call on Mr. Aaron Nelson from Planning and Zoning. Move to approve. Commissioner Olson moves to approve. Is there a second, please? Second. Commissioner Simmons seconds. Been moved and seconded to approve the building permits as presented. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Moving on, we are now on the consent agenda. The consent agenda includes items A, uh, through L, excuse me, uh, those items have been in the packet and have been uh, distributed. Move to approve. Thank you, Commissioner George. We have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a, a second, please? Second. Commissioner Olson, second. Been moved and seconded to approve the consent agenda. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried, thank you. We move on to the regular agenda. Item number one is public comment. Madam Secretary, has there been anyone that has registered for public comment? All right, very good. We move out of public comment and we move into item number two on the regular agenda. Item number two is the approve of the second reading of A24-4 Zoning Ordinance Amendment regarding off-street parking. We're going to call on Mr. Aaron Nelson, the Planning Director for the City of West Fargo. Good evening and welcome, Mr. Nelson. Good evening, President Artis and Commissioners. So item two uh, is, uh, this item was presented, uh, or excuse me, item two is a rezoning of a, a zoning ordinance amendment, or excuse me, let's start over. Item two is a rezoning, a zoning ordinance amendment regarding off-street parking. This is the second reading of this item. This item was originally presented to the City Commission at your last regular meeting on April 1st. Uh, the proposed amendment is unchanged aside from one tweak to the draft ordinance in response to a question by Commissioner Simmons at the last meeting. 
uh, regarding the ability of a, um, someone to appeal a decision of staff or the Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, and so in the slightly revised ordinance in your packet here, we did add a little section just clarifying how um, appeals are handled. Um, just in summary there, any, any decision of staff or the Planning and Zoning Commission is ultimately appealable regardless of the topic um, within Title IV of the ordinances. And so we're just calling attention to that fact and then just clarifying the process that someone would take if they wanted to appeal a decision. Uh, outside of that, the, um, the ordinances as presented last or two weeks ago, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Otherwise, the recommended action tonight is to approve the second reading of the ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Commissioners, any questions? your pleasure. Make a motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Simmons. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second, please? Second. second. Commissioner Anderson seconds. Been moved and seconded to approve the second reading of A24-4 Zoning Ordinance Amendment regarding off-street parking. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Right. Opposed? Motion carried. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Item number three is the approval of the second reading of A24-5, an ordinance amendment regarding pool fencing. Again, we call on Mr. Aaron Nelson, Director of Planning for the City of West Fargo. Thank you. So this item was also presented at the City Commission meeting two weeks ago, um, April 1st. Uh, in summary, the proposed amendment would reduce the minimum height requirement for residential pool barriers uh, from six feet to four feet and would provide additional details regarding uh, acceptable barriers. Um, there have been no changes to the draft ordinance since uh, the first reading. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Otherwise, the recommended action tonight is to approve a second reading of this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Commissioners, any questions on this item? Move to approve second reading. Commissioner Olson moves to approve the second reading. Is there a second, please? Is there a second, please? Second. Commissioner George seconds. It's been moved and approved. Um, there's been a motion and a second to approve the second reading of A24-5 ordinance amendments regarding pool fencing. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Moving on, we are now on item number four, is the approval of a Renaissance Zone application for straight six diesel. We call on Casey Sanders Berglund, our economic development manager. Good evening, Ms. Berglund, welcome. Good evening, Commission President, Commissioners. Um, tonight I have an application for straight six diesel. Uh, this is pretty straightforward as uh, I'm, I'm not sure since I've been with the city, I've had a project quite like this, but essentially this property owner, Ryan Rested, was already approved last year, right around this time, for a Renaissance Zone uh, application. And the, the Straight Six Diesel is an organization that leases from that property. And so the, this is essentially the, a rider incentive that any leasing business can apply for. In order for them to apply, they need an approval from the city in which they uh, own and operate their business from, and we have to be that city. And in order to have them move their application forward to the state, the city commission needs to review that application. So essentially what the public participation is here today is um, income tax, um, and that is uh, is approximately 130,000 over five years. They're um, a small uh, diesel mechanic operation, and um, they uh, just started their business uh, in late last year, so they're kind of learning the ropes, and they were incentivized essentially from Brian Rusted's group to come to West Fargo because of this along with a few other incentives. So um, with that, I'd kind of open up for questions if any of you have any regarding their application. Thank you. Questions, Commissioner? Move to approve. Commissioner Olson moves to approve. Is there a second, please? Second. 
Commissioner Simmons seconds, been moved and seconded to approve the Renaissance Zone application for straight six diesel as presented this evening by Ms. Berglund. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank, Thank you. you. We are now on item number five, and the purpose of this discussion is to approve a purchase of a budgeted wheel loader. It will be presented this evening by Mr. Matt Andrick, Public Works Director. Good evening, Mr. Andrick, and welcome. Good evening, Commission President, Commissioners. Uh, in our uh, 2024 budget for our street department, uh, we had uh, a wheel loader in there uh, that was approved within that budget. Uh, we went out for an RFP. Uh, we got four bids back on that RFP. Uh, the Komatsu 320 loader came in as the lowest bid that met our specs uh, that we'd like to go forward with. Uh, the price of that came in at uh, $238,515. Uh, we did have $305,000 budgeted for that uh, in the 2024 budget. Uh, with that um, purchase of the loader, we'd like to add a snow bucket that would go with that as well. Uh, that would help us um, be able to get into the, probably some alleys or some different uh, uh, parking lots at the public works or around City Hall, different areas that would help us push a little bit snow a little bit faster. Uh, we could also purchase that uh, for about 14500 That, although, was not originally budgeted for. Um, so we we're asking with the savings, um, cutting under budget, if we could add that snow bucket in as well. Um, that money would just come out of the street department's budget uh, for 2024. Um, and even if we did total the cost of the snow bucket and the loader, it'd be $253,015. And that would still be about $51,985 lower than what we originally budgeted for. Uh, so I'll ask that you approve uh, the wheel order with the snow bucket, and I'll stand for any questions. Questions for Mr. Anvik? Mr. Olson. Does the, uh, the wheel loader come with any kind of a bucket? This snow bucket is one of those really long or wide ones? Is that what it? Yeah, the snow bucket's an additional one. It, it okay. does come with a standard bucket. Okay. This is just a, an additional bucket that we would get with it to use during the winter months. We have the, the normal standard bucket it comes with. Okay. The equipment's at Komatsu? Correct. I, is I to assume that it's a locally owned uh, or local company? Yeah, it's from General warranty Lord. and all of that. Yep. In the Fargo Moorhead, West Fargo area. Yep. Okay. Commissioners, any additional questions from Mr. Randvik? I'll remind the commission that uh, we changed our purchasing policy uh, several years ago, two years ago, probably maybe three. One year ago. Thank one you, year ago. Mr. Scott. <laughs> I'm getting hand signals from Mr. Scott. Uh, one year ago, where uh, because of uh, some of the things that we hadn't had some uh, audited statements and the like, we wanted to be more aware of what was going on because it was in the, uh, you know, in the, in the in the overall budget. So anything over a certain dollar amount, the department heads uh, come back to us and have to still have approval from us to, in order to do that. Uh, I have discussed this with a number, saw a number of department heads, and they think this is cumbersome, but that is our policy at this point in time. So I see some potential candidates for city commission sitting in the audience, and so that might be an issue that uh, a commission might want to bring up again is to uh, stay on this course or if we're going to do something else. But uh, I do know that there have been a a number of, you know, if it's approved in the budget, why do we have to come back and ask for approval again? And it's anything, in your case, Mr. Andrick? I think it's 200,000, 100? Yeah. I think it's, yeah. A, a director's side. Yeah, I think it's, I think Dustin can sign up to 100, everything over 100,000 we have to bring back up. Oh, just, for, just for the information as to why, if you're wondering if why we're having it come back. So, again, uh, commissioners, any additional questions for Mr. Andrick? Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second, please? Second. Commissioner George seconds. Been moved and is seconded to approve the purchase of the budgeted wheel loader as presented by Mr. Anvik for a total cost of $253,015. Is there any further discussion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Anvik. Uh, item number six. Again, we're going to call on Mr. Anvik, and it's regarding a contract to construct a city fueling station. Uh, again, Matt Anvik, Director of Public Works. Uh, good evening, Commissioner President, Commissioners again. Uh, back on November 6th, uh, 2023, uh, I came before you and asked if we could publish an RFP to go out um, for a potential fueling station within the city. Uh, we wanted to do two sites, one site up at Public Works and the other one down at 40th Avenue, uh, next to our building by the water tower there. Uh, it was approved at that meeting and uh, we began writing the RFP. Uh, we published that uh, just after the, the new year and uh, we just got those bids back here on, on March 21st. Uh, we had four bids. Uh, we conducted uh, just kind of ra ranking them, and we decided that r, &R Petroleum was the lowest, uh, and they met all our criteria. Uh, for the two sites, the total was $954,085. Uh, there's some different cuts that we could make with that, so we got that down to 893708 thousand and twenty five cents uh, and but then there would be also some work that public works would have to do for uh, adding some concrete a little bit of removals and that would be about an additional thirty thousand so we're looking at a total of about nine hundred and twenty three thousand uh, seven hundred eight dollars and twenty five cents for both sites and uh, as part of that packet too is uh, we had letters from um, both chief uh, chief fuller and and chief Nielsen uh, in support of uh, getting these fueling stations, uh, one, to make it a little bit more efficient for their staff, a little bit safer for the, the PD to fuel up um, and not being at a residential gas station. Um, they just, just a little bit of a safety so they know who's around them. And then for actually for public works, it's a lot easier for us on site to be able to fill up. Um, and then when actually having a fueling station down south, we wouldn't have to travel as far to get fueled up. Uh, we would be able to piggyback on the uh, contract with Fargo. Fargo bids out their fuel. Uh, they've had a station, fire, uh, fueling station for quite a few years and have bid out their fuel. They're also, I think, in the process of uh, awarding a contract to build a second station down south. Uh, with that, buying in bulk, um, we, there is um, significant savings that we could see. Uh, the fuel market is a little bit volatile, so it, it it's really hard to say, um, looking at some numbers that we were running, depending on if you hit it right type of thing, um, Fargo saw about $2.20 um, savings on diesel back in, in 22. Um, that's probably not typical. I think over the, the four year period that we were looking at, it was somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, about a 80 to 90 cents uh, savings on both gas and diesel right around there. Uh, for what we use, I think we'd be pretty safe to say that by having our own bulk station, we'd be anywhere between that 100 to 150 thousand mark, you know, savings over the year, uh, just depending on the market at the time. Um, I guess with that, I'll stand for any questions. Oh, I guess I should say um, we are. This was in the, the CIP um, in the 2023 CIP, I believe that we had, or 2022. To have this in there, we had about a million dollars allocated in that in the CIP. Um, so that's where I guess the funds would come from. I, I, we're suggesting from the CIP sales tax. I guess now I'll stand for any questions. Commissioner Wilson, if we were to approve this, when do you expect uh, construction and completion and all that good stuff? Uh, once we have all the contracts signed, that they have to order it. They're looking at August, probably of right around beginning of August to the middle of August to start construction once all everything gets in and I believe they have about an eight-week timetable so we should be uh, up and running for next fall or next snow season I guess if you want to look at it that way Commissioner Anderson excuse me uh, so this $30,000 um, for the public works portion of it um, is that just material or does that include labor and overhead that, would, that was just material Okay. That's what I put in there for that. Commissioner Simmons. Thank you. <clears throat> when this came up, I know I had a couple questions for you, Matt, and pretty much you, 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 know, you answered them, so thank you for that. 
Um, I do have two that I didn't ask you. One, was, well, I did one, but one was, do we have to do anything with the EPA? Are they involved with this? Do we have to get, are we, look, are we thinking about that process? Yeah, that would be as part of the contract. The contractor handles all that um, that we go with. They're the ones that would make sure that we're um, getting all the right permits and, and following everything that we would need to follow to install one of these. Okay, and then the next question was, I know that where we purchase our fuel from now um, from the vendor, it's a co-op, yep. and we have, you know, we're vested in them, and I know there's some money that you need to look for to get. Did you make a phone call to them? Yeah, I did reach out to them. Uh, I left a message, and uh, we were just kind of weren't able to connect. It sounded like the guy I was talking to was out of town. Okay, he had sent me an email that I got this morning, and uh, he was going to try and connect this week. We just didn't weren't able to connect today, I guess. So um, he was out of town last week. Okay, so. from my understanding, there's still going to be a backup for support, correct? As correct. Far as yeah, I don't. I don't foresee we'd. Come, I mean, it's not like we're going to completely cut off and you know going to any of the local stations. I'm assuming we'd still fill up at certain times. Um, there's also going to be times where we could probably get bulk fuel from one of the vendors in town, where if we need to top the tanks off or if we've kind of gone over our allotment that we've bid out with Fargo, I'd assume there's, there's going to be opportunities that okay. still so be partners that, with them. Also, just in case something should go wrong here or there's times this, this is shut down, um, that we're authorized to, to go to those, our officers and stuff, we're authorized to go to those regardless. And Yeah, we would still have that backup to do. We'd, just, okay. we'd continue to do that. It just We would have our own pumps. So, uh, you know, just fueling up from that way would be a little bit cheaper if we could do it this way and then... Um, but we always still have that backup. Well, I agree with you. It's safer to have our own. There's no question about it. If there's if there's problems or even as we move forward, you know, with I remember when we went through was it COVID or even prior to that, where we were concerned with contamination and concerned with with locking our own pumps up that we had. So yep. I, I have no problem with that. I was just more concerned that we have a backup. Yep. Commissioner Olson. Um, more of a comment than anything. I just found out recently that we, the city of West Fargo used to have their own bulk um, fueling stations located at the sanitation yep. about eight, 10 years ago. So it's not like we haven't ever used this before. Yep. So it's just more of a, we're getting back to what we used to have. Yep. I believe that it was about 2016, I think they went away from that. And then, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what the decision at that time was, but. Um, I think the tanks there were a little bit leaking or they had to be replaced and then they decided to go this route instead. Sure. Um, but now looking at what we're at now and especially the last few years when that, that fuel is up, you know, when we're paying over $4 for diesel and that discrepancy, but it just, it's really hard to tell about what kind of savings that we can forecast because of how much the market changes and fluctuates, I guess. Well, I know back then, I'm sorry, Mayor, I know back then there was a safety issue with locking them up and, make, you know, and, and mm -hmm. that was a huge issue back then. So yep. they will, I'm assuming, will there be a fence around this or will it be, how will? There won't be a fence around it, but with the, um, the FOB system that we have that controls it, you have to be able to either FOB it in and have an access code and be able to, you know, we were, we'll be able to monitor that quite a bit. And we'll, I'm sure we'll have security cameras on them as well cameras yep we'll have cameras on there so we'll be able to go ahead and monitor those and then we'll be able to you know it the i guess the software that's with it as soon as you key your number in then it'll we could do that print out on on which department was using x amount of dollars in which vehicle mileage everything like that yeah. one more and i know we thank you one more and that's it i promise no. <laughs> i know we had that we had the conversation as far as with our software hopefully that we'll be able to to um, determine what department it's billed to as well, which is a huge thing for us, I think. To start yeah, doing. we'll be, uh, with the software we have, it'll be really easy to run reports and detail and actually probably be, like, we can run them every day if we wanted to and have almost a, a running tally on what we're doing so we know exactly where we're at. Yeah, it's critical to know the proper allocation of that expense, no doubt about it. Mr. Anderson. Yeah, just to address that, uh, the fence, the lock up or whatever on um, the school district at their bus garage, they have tanks and they're not buying a fence or anything. The tank itself is, but the pumps aren't. So yeah. it's, yeah. Anyone else? I'm gonna call on Mr. Scott. Uh, 
in the narrative here that Mr. Anvik has provided for the commission, <clears throat> there's a comment made here. Another option that the commission could consider for funding the project would be to fund 75% of the project from CIP sales tax and 25% from the public safety sales tax. Uh, Mr. Scott, have you did an evaluation and what's your thoughts on, on whether it's going to be you know, from the general fund or are we going to do some public safety sales tax? What's your thoughts? Well, uh, like Mr. Anvik uh, mentioned earlier, we had originally um, planned for this to be funded through the capital improvement sales tax, uh, but uh, since then, we've introduced now the public safety sales tax, which is why he's uh, presenting that as an option. Um, I think that certainly makes sense. What we don't have is, you know, we don't have a solid um, number on how the, the split will, will go from year to year. You know, obviously that'll depend on the usage. So, uh, but in terms of, of um, using 25% of the public safety sales tax, I, I certainly think that makes sense if uh, the commission wants to go that route. Well, my, my only comment, excuse me, Commissioner Simmons, my only comment there would be is how we presented the public sales tax to the public as to how we talked about this because we said fire and we said police mm -hmm. very succinctly. And so um, I think we need to weigh that in from what we, uh, when we did the public forums and there, there was no question of where those dollars were going to be going. Yeah. This is a different issue. Commissioner Simmons. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'm going to agree with the mayor on this one. I think we, we're going down a slippery slope where we start using money for gas and things like that when we made it pretty clear that it was for buildings and, and, and PD. And I understand, Dustin, so, you know, I'm not saying you're wrong, but I am saying that I'm not, there's no way, I, I'm sorry, but I could support this because I think it'll come back to bite us if, if, we, if we don't stay strict with what we're doing. Clarify, please. At this split? You mean? At that, well, using it period for, for, for what you want to use it for. I think it was very clear we were going to use it strictly for police and fire and for their, you know, like when we add on, I know we're, we're looking at that. I'm all for that. I think that's a good, a good purpose to, because that's a building, that's infrastructure. But you're looking at it more for the, for the diesel and everything, right? Splitting the gas and all that. Yeah, it'd be splitting a gas. I don't think right now you have, um, PD is over 50% of our, our, our gas usage. But they budget for that. Right. And I, mean, I don't think that was part of our, when we were doing this, that that was, we were looking at saying, okay, we're going to use it for gas and stuff. Yeah, correct. And then that's, I guess, why I just put that in, in a footnote in there. I mean, I assumed it was going to be the capital improvement, you know, sales tax. Um, I didn't know where that level is. That's why I was like, that's more of a commission decision level than, than it would be ours. Commissioner Olson. What you're asking for is for the construction of the fueling stations. It's not to purchase uh, fuel and uh, gasoline later on. So what we're what we're approving today is to build the fueling stations and pd and fire use those will be using those facilities so it isn't that we're paying for gasoline and for diesel fuel out of this nine hundred thousand dollars we're just building them so it is kind of infrastructure for both fire and for pd so if you want to look at it that and, way. yeah and i misspoke yeah. when i said the gas part but i'm, yeah. I'm still concerned that you i know, know we're it, adding it on here but i wanted to make sure yeah, we're clarified yeah, that that saying. we're not buying gas and diesel with this nine hundred thousand. we're building a gas station at two different locations which will be used by both fire and police so you can kind of make a tie that it is infrastructure for them in a way. Yeah, but I'm still saying it's a slippery slope that yeah. we're going down. I'm a little yeah. concerned that we promised the public very clearly what right. we were going to do. Mr. Scott, you had a comment? No, uh, Commissioner Olson clarified what I was going to bring up to that. I was talking the, the construction of the facility, if you will. So, yeah. so uh, commissioners, if we, as we consider this item, uh, I would respectfully request that we uh, the motion either include this this scenario here that we have in our packet or very succinctly uh, identifies how it will be paid for if you if, if you will please I would make a motion that we approve it but that we identify the money comes out of the CPI funds and not out of the safety sales tax. is there a second second 
Mr. Anderson? Do I have a second? I have a motion and a second to approve the purchase of the fueling stations and that the funding for this would come from the CIP uh, sales tax. Is there any further discussion? Hearing nothing, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Anvik. <clears throat> Item number seven is project number 1349, sanitary lift station rehabilitation, rehabilitation uh, SA 11, 30, and 31, and 36. We're going to call on Jerry Wallace, the assistant city engineer, this evening. And the purpose of the discussion is to accept a bid and an award a contract. Good evening, Mr. Wallace, and welcome. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Commission President and Commissioners. Uh, I'm before you tonight to uh, present the uh, next phase of our sanitary lift station uh, rehabilitation projects. Um, on April 4th, uh, 2024, we opened bids on this project. Uh, two bids total were received, uh, with the lowest bidder being CC Steel. Uh, their bid totaled $1,319,530. Uh, comparing that to the engineer's estimate, uh, the engineer's estimate was about $1.26 million, uh, variance there of about 4.7%. Uh, um, just a little history behind this, several years ago, uh, we entered into an effort to look at uh, the sanitary lifts and the system on the north side of the city primarily. And uh, this is the latest phase in uh, I, I work items that were identified during that uh, look into the, the, this part of the city's infrastructure. Um, we're hopeful that uh, you know, when this work is completed, uh, these lifts will uh, you know, we'll get a good 20, 25 years out of them, ideally. Uh, the cost of this project is gonna be paid via capital improvement sales tax. And uh, at this point tonight, uh, the staff's recommendation would be to accept the bid and award the contract to CC Steel for uh, $1,319,530. And uh, I'm available for any questions. Thank you, Mr. Wallace. Commissioners, any questions? Make a motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Olson. We have a motion to approve. Is there a second, please? I'm second. Commissioner Anderson seconds. Been moved and seconded to accept the bid and award the contract for project, project number 1349, a sanitary lift station and rehabilitation of number 11, number 30, number 31, and number 36. And the award goes to CC Steel for $1,319,530. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Wallace. Thank you for your time. Item number eight is an electric franchise agreement amendment. We're going to call on Mr. John Shockley, the city attorney for the city of West Fargo. Good uh, evening, Mr. Shockley, and welcome. Good evening. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Commission President, uh, members of the West Fargo Commission. Uh, Tonight you have before you a proposed change for the ordinances uh, for uh, Cass County Electric uh, and then also XL Energy. As part of the city's uh, budget adjustment last year, uh, there was a decision made to increase the franchise fee from 2% to 4%. Um, as the commission is aware, we've been going through and increasing all the franchise fees uh, throughout a series of meetings this spring. This is the last set uh, for the electric uh, providers. Uh, it's a pretty simple ordinance change. It's changing 2% to 4%. Uh, once the ordinances are in place, then we send certified copies to the um, uh, franchisees uh, the, here, are the two electric companies, and they will implement the increase. Um, happy to answer any questions, but once again, it's a pretty straightforward ordinance change. Thank you, Mr. Shockley. Questions, commissioners? Make a motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner George. Is there a second, please? I didn't. Second. Commissioner <laughs> Simmons seconds. And moved and seconded to approve the electric finance agreement amendment as presented by Mr. Shockley for Cass County Electric and uh, Excel Energy. 
Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you, Mr. Shockley. Item number nine is a recommendation from the JPI Joint Powers Agreement regarding the lights to Dustin Scott, City Administrator. Well, good evening. Thank you, Commissioner President Dardis and Commissioners. Um, here right now on behalf of the Joint Powers Committee. Um, gonna scroll down to a timeline here and just do a little uh, walk through in the history of, of this Joint Powers Committee. If you all recall, uh, nearly two years ago now, uh, the city entered into a Joint Powers Agreement with the West Fargo School District uh, to uh, develop a piece of land that is um, primarily on school district property as well as there is some city-owned property there as well. Uh, the uh, agreement was really formed with the overall goal to leverage publicly owned land to incentivize a private developer to grow the tax base for all the taxing entities while serving our community with unique spaces. Um, fast forward a year into March of 23, a request for proposals was issued, sent out to the development community in which uh, we did receive one submittal on that proposal was from Epic Companies. The Joint Powers Committee, which um, consists of three members from the city, three members from the school district, and then there's also a, a, a tie-breaking member uh, also represented by the school district. Uh, that committee did conduct an interview with Epic where we reviewed their proposal uh, and ultimately uh, that committee forwarded on a recommendation to continue working with Epic companies to uh, refine their proposal. Now, some time has passed. Um, over the course of the, the past several months, the, um, the staff of West Fargo and um, Levi Bachmeyer from the school district has worked off and on with Epic to further refine details of their uh, proposed concept to develop uh, that land. Which brings us to last month, the committee convened again to uh, review that proposal and ultimately has forwarded on now a recommendation which is before you tonight and that recommendation is uh, worded verbatim in your packet and essentially uh, in summary uh, it basically includes moving forward with phase one of a project which would include a hotel parking ramp and a mixed-use building so uh, with that um, I would stand for any questions and I also would uh, point out that uh, Brian from Epic Companies is in the audience and I would re refer to uh, Casey Saunders, our Economic Development Manager, and or Aaron Nelson, our, our Planning Director, to uh, help assist answering these questions. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Commissioner? Commissioner Simmons. I have some questions, but I'll hold till the end if somebody else has some. Well. Okay, good. Uh, I have some questions, uh, okay. maybe a, a Mr. Nelson. With regard to the parking situation that we have experienced at the lights, uh, so does this follow our present policies with regard to parking and the number of units that will be va available? Uh, we, we didn't make any special considerations for this with regard to the parking ramp or all the activities that are taking place out there. Because parking has been an issue out there. Yeah. Just so I understand your question, are you asking the uh, regarding the ordinance amendment tonight? Yes. Does that does that have any effect on this uh, this project? Yeah, I think, um, and I can let John um, Shockley, our city attorney, chime in if she if you'd like. If I say something incorrect, but uh, I would say you know this development process started under the current or the, the former um, ordinance ordinances. And so they would have the option to utilize those or those ordinances prior to the adoption of tonight's amendment. However, uh, that is also an option would be to go forward with the, the new um, the new regulations that were adopted here tonight. Okay. Mr. Shockley, do you have comments on that? Huh? No. Uh, 
that's one of the requests that I would certainly make is that we do a re uh, we evaluate that very closely that we don't have the situation like we have been dealing with in downtown as well as out at the lights so I want special attention I would request that you have special attention to that type of issues yeah I would note really quick if I may we have had conversations with epic companies about doing a an updated parking study on this site uh, to that point very good anything else thank you. Mr. Simmons thank you um, so just to fill in a little bit of the history when we actually did I said on the committee when we actually did the RFP and what I'm referring to is the multi-purpose facility that we want to put out there um, that was in the RFP the last meeting we had we had some technical difficulties and I couldn't hear everything that was going on and so if you'll notice in your notes I absolutely excuse me that's called old old age old age yeah <laughs> old age it definitely is I've been called that I believe <laughs> um, if you look in your in your in your notes you will see that I abstained from voting and the reason I did that was specifically because of the multi-use facility I mean I, I have from the very beginning we discussed it that was part of the, the project in phase one and I understand I totally understand why it was pulled out of phase one for the TIF because we don't want to use it for the TIF I get that um, but what I do want to stress is that I feel it needs to be in phase one just for the economic development that it's going to bring to our community um, and I and I would like if it's okay with the Commission to have Casey come up I can talk all day long about the block out rooms I can talk about the, moving the concerts over I can talk about what's going to come to the community because of it because we've seen it at the lights there's no question what it's done for economic development but I would like Casey to come up she just got us uh, and I, you know, I apologize ahead of time but she just got a, a small I guess slideshow or something that 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 I want to show you folks what the possibilities are and and after she's done I want to stress I'm not asking anyone tonight to vote to to add it to phase one unless you'd like to uh, all I'm asking is that we have our staff look into the possibilities of different funding mechanisms rather than the TIF because I truly believe there's organizations out there I believe we can get sponsorships for this stuff as well and, and so I just want Casey to go over it if you, if you would if that's okay with the Commission mm -hmm. that's fine it's part of the discussion Sure, I, I emailed the document to Emily, so as she's pulling it up, I'll just uh, stress essentially this document outlines a really conservative um, kind of high level peak at what uh, adding a multifunction facility, and in this case, that'd be about six months of ice added into this area and six months of a facility. Essentially, if you think of high ceilings, concrete floors, um, uh, kind of a more versatile use um, space and so if you kind of take a high level look at this you can see there's currently 24 tournaments that happen right uh, right at the uh, West Fargo High School um, or excuse me the West Fargo ice rink there there's 24 tournaments that happen if we were to add another sheet of ice we could add nine additional out of the community teams and so that's where a lot of the economic impact for the ice comes from in addition to rental um, spaces and then of course the opportunity to support other sports in our community other than hockey specifically um, but we know we know from other um, tournaments and and other um, communities this is how hockey of shows up and so we can see that in the dollars and the people that would visit this area in addition taking a look at the um, kind of the other six months of the year as an estimation based on the events that call um, and this some of this information is through conversations with um, the CVB but also with um, West Fargo events executive director Mike Amundsen and so just a lot of the events that call and he has to turn down because he doesn't have space or can't accommodate, um, but also gets to have some of those anecdotal conversations um, with what their needs are. Uh, he believes that we could accommodate things such as um, an indoor rodeo, which we have seen at the lights be successful currently. Um, other things like MMA or boxing, uh, those types of events, as well as he could um, also accommodate things like uh, kids programming. So um, when we look at that, if we add all of the potential um, economic impact, again, at a high level um, approach, 
this S is estimated to be at about $3.2 million annually. And so in anticipation to having this conversation with this potential multifunction facility being part of whether it's phase one, two, or combination of originally in many of the working group conversations, um, we had conversations about investing uh, some of our uh, economic development in, or economic development sales tax um, dollars back into this area to help um, you know help this area grow and so anticipating wanting to know what that return on that investment would look like um, wanting to collect some of this information so again it's really high level and a very conservative approach um, looking at the dollars for example, there's no, there's no like concessions or anything like that that we know will be generated out here. Just looking at the things we absolutely know. So, if, okay. if that answers your question, that does. Thank you. I think the the big key here is the 2.5 percent. You know, when we talk about economic development, we talk about what's going to generate dollars to our community. And we've already, you know, proven basically what what the lights does as far as bring in, bringing in individuals into our community. Um, there is in phase one. There is a hotel out there. You know, uh, that hotel needs to be filled as well. There needs to be people staying, and and this will just bring more people into our community to spend dollars in in the restaurants, which is huge, which is what we want, right? Um, again, I'm not asking for you to vote on putting this in uh, or building I'm saying but I, I do think that we should include it in in phase one if and only if we can come up with the funding mechanism and so I'll make a motion there'll be more oh you want me to wait we have more discussion yep I would figure we would anyway after the motion but uh, I'm just curious how many square feet are we looking at this this building would be I think it's about 4,000 is that right my am I, am I I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I mean, not, yeah, square feet you're talking. Square feet. Yeah. Is for it? this multi purpose function facility potential. 30,000? 30, 30, 40,000? 40, 40, I thought 000? it was, yeah, at 30 to 40,000 is yeah. what I seem to recall. Yeah. The nice thing about it is it, is it also, like, like, we've had many concerts out there in different venues, and when you get a storm and you get lightning, guess what happens? The band won't play, so you have to you have to cancel. Or if we have uh, something in 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 the um, open area, and it rains or storms, we have to cancel. This way, we can move it right over there, and and just continue on as normal within this building, within this facility. It can be used for so many different stuff, folks. I mean, guys, if you think about it, there's 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 endless opportunities out here that that, that, that needs to go into phase one. Um, I think that we would certainly have to have a discussion with our partner in the West Fargo Public Schools because uh, and their analytics and what they wanted to do obviously they left this out of phase one and uh, of course when any time that we do some type of business incentive we have partners we have the Cass County we have the West Fargo School District so there would be no investment from the school district as it says up there in the second line there. And so we'd have to probably go this alone and figure out how to do that. So, um, Mr. Scott, did you have some additional comments that I, did I cut you off? Mandy mentioned oh. George. Yeah, I just had a question, but it's right along the same lines as what you were saying. It had to do with the school district. I, I agree with everything you're saying. I think it'd be awesome. And it, especially if you're using alternative financing methods, fantastic. My only question is we need the school district to be happy and we don't need, if they pull out, that's a problem because then we lose the land. So that's, that would be my concern as well. I just want to want to make sure they were happy with this. So um, Mr. Sim Co Commissioner Simmons, uh, should we not recommend that we have another a meeting with this, with the group? Uh, are we going to do some analytics as to how to fund it? Can I say thank you. Yeah, we, we discussed that. The problem with another meeting is the timeline is short. Um, I, from my conversations, and I can't speak for the school district, but from some of the members I talked to, the, the biggest concern they had was just using their, their money for, they wanted strictly to go to infrastructure, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but they didn't want it used for a multi-purpose. So, that's why I'm saying my motion, as I, when I make it, hopefully, will be the caveat that, you know, 
We use no TIF dollars for this. We will find the funding, and I truly believe we can through different funds, different sources, not through this. And again, all I'm, I'm not asking you to approve putting this into phase one or building. I'm just asking to allow the staff to look into the funding mechanisms, and we can have those conversations with the school district. We're not approving anything here tonight. We're just saying staff try to find other funding mechanisms. I would respectfully ask that uh, our economic development, Casey Sanders Berglund, would certainly uh, reach out to the school district at the earliest convenience and tell us about what our discussion has been here this evening, if you would, please. Yes, of, cor of course we'd include, they're, they're a partner in this project, so of course we'd include them um, in, in this discussion. Thank you. So with that said, Mr. George. Well, oh, sorry. sorry, just a quick comment. From my understanding too, if we were to if we were to go forward with this and the school district wasn't happy with this, that we could change it, right? It's not Yeah. yeah, yeah we're yeah. just okay. we're just right. So do we have an estimate of what this other building? Did we have a, we I know we had an estimate earlier on. Uh, we have we have a general general estimate and of course, you know moving forward We'd get more concrete numbers, but a general estimate of about seven and a half million for this type of facility We have some um, individuals that have expressed interest in Supporting this already or outside entities. So it we just Aren't all the way there seven to seven and a half million dollars was an estimate. Thank you. We, we do have already sponsors that are willing to move forward with some of the funding. So I, I'm, I'm confident, in Casey, I think you could say we're fairly confident that we'll, we'll find the funding to do this. And we will have discussions with the school district and of course the county as well. They're part of this as well. Um, so having said that, my motion would be that we move forward with the recommendation from the JPA with the caveat that we allow the staff to look for additional funding to put the multi-use purpose into phase one. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner George seconds. I have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 10 is an agreement that will be brought forward by Mr. Dustin Scott, our city administrator, with regard to Nexus. Mr. Scott. Thank you again, Commission President Dardis and Commissioners. Uh, as you are aware, we are still in the process of uh, trying to find a finance director to come uh, fill that role. And uh, similar to last year, uh, that puts us in a position where we need external resources to help uh, with a few tasks. As you can see in the agreement in the, in the packet, uh, the, the primary tasks that we're focusing on right now are uh, helping with the budget, some help with preparing the uh, 2023 audit, and then uh, some general on-call services. Uh, I asked Nexus to draft this agreement uh, based on an hourly contract that would not exceed uh, $45,000. So as, um, if, if approved, as we move forward and, and start working, we, we will certainly come back to the commission uh, prior to going past that $45,000 threshold. Uh, but uh, as, as wonderful of a job as our finance staff is doing with managing the day-to-days, uh, we still do need some external resources to help with uh, these uh, primary uh, focus points, again, being the, the budget and, and the audit. So with that, I would stand for any questions. Questions for Mr. Scott? Uh, my position on this is that I would highly recommend that the commission uh, give full consideration to this. It's an absolute necessity as we continue to do uh, the work we need to do in the finance department and to move forward with our 2023 audit. I'd make a motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Simmons. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Olson seconds. Been moved and seconded to approve the Nexus contract as presented this evening by Mr. Scott. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. 
Uh, next order of business is again Mr. Scott, City Administrator's Report. Thank you, Will. I'll use the last item as a segue into uh, my Administrator's Report, starting with an um, update on the Finance Director Search. Uh, we have received uh, uh, several applications and we are scheduling interviews with three of those applicants for Friday. Uh, the, if you recall, the hiring committee from last year uh, when we were looking for a finance director uh, included uh, Bernie Dardis and uh, Robin Anderson. So they will uh, participate in the interviews on Friday. They will be virtually uh, conducted. So um, two of those three candidates are outside of our regional area. So we did decide to do virtual interviews. Um, optimistic that we'll find a candidate that will work well for us, but we'll, we'll report back at our next meeting. Uh, any questions on the finance director search? None? Okay. Uh, next, just an update on the uh, senior director of administrative services. The um, direction of that hiring committee was to open that up externally and internally. Uh, so that position is currently published. It's open to external applicants as well as internal applicants. We are gonna close that on April 26th and hopefully then start anticipating um, interviews for that position the first or possibly second weekend of May depending on schedules. Any questions on that? All right, and my last item, I'm very uh, pleased to end on a happy note. The um, engineering department, you know, they're, they're pretty good at spending money. <laughs> we all know that, right? Uh, but they recently um, pursued a new grant opportunity for one of our large upcoming transportation projects, the 9th Street Northeast project. That includes not only 9th Street Northeast from Main, from Main to 12th Avenue, but also 7th Street Northeast from 9th to our eastern uh, city limits border with Fargo. Um, in all, that's about a, a $23 million project based on our, our consultant's current estimates. We um, originally received federal funding of about nine and a half to $10 million, uh, but that's not where the engineering department stopped. When a new grant opportunity came forward, um, the 68th Legislative Assembly created a new funding opportunity. It's called the Flexible Transportation Program by which uh, communities can apply for uh, monies to help offset either the local match for federally awarded grants um, or other uh, eligible related uh, items. So our engineering department put in a, a strong application. Overall, there were, if I remember right, 66 applications that went uh, to the state and, or I'm sorry, 284 applications. 200 plus. They awarded about $84 million to 66 different projects, including ours. We received uh, roughly $8.8 or $8 .8 million. So that's 10% of the monies that the state awarded out just to West Fargo, to our project. So um, that is very exciting news. That brings the total grant funding to nearly $19 million on a $23 million project. So um, that is really a testament to following our uh, guiding principles that were created back in 2021 to really help uh, reduce special assessments and look for alter alternative funding sources. So again, uh, very proud to be the one up here taking the, the glory, but really it was the engineering team, uh, Dan Hansen, Jerry, Andrew, and others that wrote a good application and got us this additional mo uh, money. So um, with that, I'd answer any questions. Also entertain any applause. Commissioner, <laughs> <laughs> questions? I just have one. I'm obviously thanking our team and you for getting this grant. But I know in the past, is this something, and you would know, Mayor, more than anybody, that we should send a thank you to the state or somebody there for, never hurts to say thank you. They rarely get that. Is that something we could do as a commission? Certainly. Good idea. I would recommend that we do that because Absolutely. thank yous are yep. very important and they're far and few between. Awesome. Absolutely. And I think that could um, not only go to the state, but also that legislative assembly. That Correct. Uh, yep. So and it's the very, yep. very good idea. Thank you. And that'd be all I have. Questions for Mr. Scott? 
right. Any non-agenda items? Commissioners, any non-agenda items that you'd like to bring forward this evening? Staff, any non-agenda items? Nothing? Nothing at all? All right, Commissioner Simmons. Move to adjourn. Commissioner Olson. Second. We stand adjourned, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you all very much. It is very, so I appreciate it, thank you.